Oftentimes, people feel that digital painting is just not direct enough. They'd prefer that it was a more fluid experience. Well, in this video, I'm going to introduce the idea of customizing Photoshop to make the experience more pleasant, creative, and efficient. So first off, close your eyes for a second and imagine that you're driving. You're sitting in the driver's seat and all the necessary controls are placed conveniently at your fingertips and right under your feet. The whole layout is based on priority. Now, for obvious reasons, the brake pedal is much bigger than the eject CD button. It's because one of them is much more vital than the other. Also, the operations that you do the most often, like using the turn signals, the gas, the brake, they're located the most closely to your resting position. So what you're experiencing here is good user interface, or UI. And when I say interface, all I mean is the controls with which you operate a piece of machinery. All right, you can open your eyes now. So here I'm using the brush tool and I wanna to switch to the eraser tool. I've got two choices. Either I can move my right hand with the pen over to the eraser icon, select it, and then come back to my drawing and erase. Or I can use my left hand, the one that's sitting on my computer keyboard, and I can hit the corresponding keyboard shortcut. Well, for me, the choice is obvious. With my right hand, I'm drawing. With my left hand, I'm not doing anything. So I may as well make it useful and use it to operate the keyboard shortcuts. But unlike a car, Photoshop is operated by a very awkward interface, your standard keyboard. And to make matters worse, Adobe designed the keyboard layout assuming that you're not very smart, or at least assuming that you don't have a very good memory. So here was their method. They said, let's assign a command key with a corresponding letter with its English spelling. So we'll say the brush tool, uh, that's B. E for the eraser tool, control T for free transform, and etc. So while this may be easy to learn, it's really a terrible system for efficiency. So whether you've been using the defaults for years or are just starting to learn, it's time to customize your layout for the better, seriously. So if you open the edit menu, there's a section here called keyboard shortcuts. This is where you're going to be able to overwrite the defaults and choose a layout that suits your workflow. Any of these items can be assigned a new keyboard shortcut. So once you've found this menu, you've got some hard choices to make. You're going to be designing a perfect layout from scratch based on your button priority. So start by putting your left hand on the keyboard. Go ahead and do it right now. You're going to put your left thumb on the space bar. Now take a look at where the rest of your fingers come to rest. Where are they most natural? Take a note of these. Next, I want you to write down a priority list of the commands that you use on a regular basis with the most common tools at the top. So here are some of mine. It might look like these. They might be totally different. So with these two pieces of information, try and match up the most easy to reach buttons on your keyboard with the most commonly used Photoshop commands. Now this is not a short process, and if you do it correctly, it'll probably take you a number of revisions. But let me tell you, it is worth it. Seriously. Once you've designed a layout that is custom tailored to fit your hand and your workflow, you'll begin to feel like you're operating an instrument. You'll truly force the software to just get out of the way and will let you work on the fun part, creating artwork. So if you guys have any interesting keyboard layouts or user interface tweaks in general, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Thanks for watching.